Today I've got a Moto phone that's officially stuck on Android 12. Yeah, it's an old device, but guess what? Now it's running Android 16. It has all the features of Android 16, like circle to search, the new user interface, better performance, and so much more. And here's the best part. I installed this without using a PC at all. Now you might be wondering how you can install this on your device. This video is for anyone who wants to install a custom ROM but can't find one for their specific device on XDA or anywhere else. So what's the solution? We can install a GSI ROM on phone. It's also a custom ROM, and many ROMs actually provide GSIs. For example, we can install Evolution X GSI, Lineage OS GSI, and many more options. So if there's no custom ROM available for your device either, keep watching this video. But if you can find an official custom ROM for your device on XDA, please don't install GSI. Go ahead and install the custom ROM instead. Now let's see how you can install this on your device too. The only requirement to install this is an unlocked bootloader. If your device bootloader isn't unlocked yet, you can check out my videos on unlocking bootloader. I've created videos covering all the major brands. In this video, I'm using a Moto phone, but this guide will work on all devices released after Android 10. That's when Google introduced Project Treble in Android 11. So first thing first, you need to download an app called Treble Info. After installing and opening this app, if it says that Project Treble is supported, congratulations, your device is supported and you can install a GSI ROM on it. Now on this app's homepage, just click on the Browse Images button. It'll take you to a GitHub repository where you can find multiple GSI ROMs for Android 16, Android 15, and more. You'll also find Evolution X, Lineage OS, and plenty of other GSI ROMs. So go ahead and download according to your preference. After downloading your preferred GSI, we need to flash this onto your device without a PC. To do this, we'll use another Android phone as a PC. You can use any phone for this. All phones support this feature, so you'll need to transfer the downloaded GSI ROM to your secondary phone. Since these GSIS are archive files, you'll have to extract it first. As you can see here, I've extracted the GSI archive file and it revealed three files, but we're only going to use system image file. Now to flash this system image, we need to download an app from the Play Store called Bugjager. After downloading this app, open it up and head over to the Fast Boot tab. Then pick up your primary phone, go to Developer Options, and enable USB debugging. This is required to connect the devices. Once that's done, grab any Type-C to Type-C cable and connect both devices together. After connecting both devices with the USB cable, check on your primary phone to make sure it's taking charge from the secondary phone. This is important. If your primary phone is charging the phone that has Bugjeeger installed, then remove and reinsert the cable. As you can see, my phones are now connected and Bugjeeger is showing the connected device. So go ahead and allow the permission to work with this in the Bugjeeger app and also grant USB permissions on your primary phone. Now click on the Reboot Fast Boot Mode button in the Bugjeeger app. This will reboot your device into Fast Boot Mode. If that doesn't work and your phone just powers on instead of going into Fast Boot, Try the Reboot Bootloader option instead. Once your device has booted into Fastboot or Bootloader mode, click on this floating shell button in the Bugjeeger app and it'll launch a terminal interface. Yeah, this app does show ads, but it's a free and useful app, so it deserves an ad view. Now in this text field, while your phones are connected, type Fastboot Flash System Then click on this attachment button and select the extracted system image file. Once you've selected the file, this app will import it. And once it's imported, press the arrow button to begin the flashing process. You might run into this error like I did, saying there's not enough space to resize your partition. Don't worry though, we've got a fix for this. 
Type this command, fastboot delete logical partition product underscore A. And after that, run the fastboot flash system command again with the system GSI image. This time, it should flash without any errors. As you can see, my flashing process has begun, so just let it do its thing. It can take several minutes to complete. On some devices, even after deleting the logical partition, you might still get a space error. In that case, your device doesn't have enough space to install that particular GSI, so you'll need to choose a GSI with less space and fewer modifications. Once the system image has flashed successfully, run these last two commands, fastboot erase user data, and after that, fastboot erase metadata. Once that's done, unplug your device and reboot it. This time, your device will reboot into the installed GSI ROM. Now, this process usually takes less than 10 minutes to boot your device into the GSI on the first reboot. It's also possible that your device might never reboot and get stuck on the Android menu. Don't panic. In this case, you'll need to flash the VB meta file as well using this command. You can find the VB meta file bundled with your device firmware. Most phones will boot the GSI without needing VB meta though. So as you can see, our device has rebooted successfully into the GSI ROM. Now I need to tell you something important. This isn't exactly a simple thing to do on your phone. Before doing anything, make sure to take a backup of your phone's data. And here's the best thing you can do. While your phone is in fast boot mode, type this command in the Bugjeeger app, fast boot get var all. This will reveal all the details of your device, like slot count, IMEI number, and many other things. Save all of these details. Also make sure to watch a video specific to your phone model, just in case anything goes wrong. Check if it's possible for your phone to be recovered from a hard brick state. So that wraps up today's video. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more tutorials like this. If you run into any issues or have questions, drop them in the comments below and uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.